What is up guys, Zach in here and in today's video, you already know what we're doing, all right? We are doing live stinking cold calling. That is right, I'm going to go live and talk to motivated sellers in front of you guys completely uncensored, unedited. This is as live as honestly live can get, right? And I'm going to go out here and try to close deals in front of you. We're going to see guys, you already know how cold calling sessions go. You just, you go for it and you see what happens. Sometimes I get crazy sellers that want to talk to me for like an hour and then I got the phone and then try to close them. And then I get sellers that are crazy. You never know. This is why we like the live stuff. This is why we love the live cold calling. And honestly, let's just get into it. You know, I, I just, I love calling live, love talking to sellers. And honestly, that is what I'm here to do, right? I'm here to kick gurus butts and cold call live and I've already kicked all the gurus butts. So all I got to do is cold call live. So guys, before I get into it, do me a favor, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and always comment below your questions. Always here to help you guys out. So without further ado, let's get it going guys. Let's actually, we got to get you guys jacked up first and then we're going to go out here in cold call motivated sellers live and let's get it. Let's get into it and let's close some deals. Woo! <laughs> Fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Get up, get up, and they got gold. Gotta wake up, gotta wake up, bitch. Get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Guys, it is wholesaling time, baby. And we're ready to go. We're ready to wholesale some houses and we are ready to cold call motivated sellers. So let's cut the fluff. Let's get into it. Let's share it, guys. First thing I do on all my cold calls, I show you that I am actually officially live. And you guys see what the real wholesaling business looks like. It's not as fun and sexy as uh, the gurus make it seem like. It's hard work. Sometimes it gets a tad boring. Sometimes it gets really exciting. We, we never know, right? But uh, here's time.gov, just showing everyone flexing uh, on Guru real quick that I talked to motivated sellers live. I talked to whole sellers live and I get deals done. So uh, as you guys see from time.gov, that's the official time. No person does a live cold call. It does that because they ain't wholesaling. So uh, let's break it down. Let's get into it. Cut the fluff. Let's get into the picker wheel. I don't know where I'm cold calling today. This is why the picker wheel chooses for me because I've, I've actually thought some markets sucked. And then I do picker wheel tells me to do it. I'm like, oh, dang it. Okay. And then I do it and I do really well. So some markets think it's great that they don't work well and vice versa. So let's click spin the things that I haven't clicked. I'm not avoiding them. I've just done them in the past year and I'm trying to get everyone um, done. So uh, where are we going? Where are we calling today? Let's figure it out. Picker wheel knows all. Just letting you guys know. That Virginia. That's where we're going today. That's where we're cold calling. And that is where we are going to wholesale houses. So let's hide that choice for next time. And we're here. All right. So what I'm going to do is cold call motivated sellers. So the first thing I need to do is do the Virginia median home price. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to skip that because I know I'll do it for the people just so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So there's actually three Virginias. Uh, just FYI for everyone to know that. Um, there is... West Vir there's the western part of the state of Virginia, not West Virginia, but the western part of the state of Virginia, okay? That is kind of its own thing. It's cheaper real estate, a little more rural. Uh, you got central and southern Virginia, which is kind of like a, I don't know, like a North Carolina type vibe, uh, really, if, if you want to um, kind of go from there. And then you got northern Virginia, which is basically, it's like D.C. based. It's like Washington, D.C. Like everything's super expensive, right? And so that's where a lot of people are. It's that DC DMV area, right? Uh, so when I look at the median home price in the state of Virginia, you're going to be all over the board, right? But like, so you got 360 right here. That's a little high. It's a lot higher than I like, but like we're looking at this area right here, you know, you got Richmond, 
Central, right? And then anything south of Central is okay. Norfolk, Virginia Beach is actually a great area. Tad more expensive, not bad. And then you got the western part of the state, right? That's pretty cheap rural area. And then you kind of got this North Carolina type vibe going on. So that is the state of Virginia. And kind of that's the key takeaway uh, for this one I'm calling. So I've, I do a lot of deals in Virginia, so I love doing it there. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's share it. And let's just start calling in Virginia. So I want to stay below about a, <clears throat> about a quarter million, I would say. A quarter million, I, I would say those are houses I want to stay below. But obviously, I might do 300 just to play around and, and, and see. So let's just go into Zillow and let's start calling it. Uh, also, on top of this, too, I do want to show you just so we get some other data. Uh, Zillow on here is showing me. Uh, I know we're not the best with Zillow values, but like these are just cities in Virginia. And they're giving me these aren't big cities at all, but median home prices around them. So, hey, no big deal. All right, let's go. OK, um, all right, we're going to go to Zillow. We are going to clear all my filters. All right. We're going to click VA for Virginia. All right. Over here. I've done some comps on a rental today. So let's do VA. All right. VA is the abbreviation of Virginia. And so that's what we're doing today. We are going to go into Virginia and we are going to cold call motivated sellers. So remember guys, everything I teach in wholesaling is at freewholesaling.com, the best free real estate wholesaling course on the internet. And so let's do this. So I'm going to filter by newest and then we are going to filter out home price. We're going to max it out at, let's do 285. Let's be safe. 285, right? Cool. Uh, let's go to home type. Let's just do houses for now, multifamily and manufactured. Okay. And then what we're going to do is go to, uh, here's that, here it is for sale. Okay. I always, I always get confused because they've, I'm so like used to the for sale by owner. And so for sale by owners on this one. So agent listed. No, I don't want new, new construction or any of that stupid stuff. Let's just do owner posted it. They make it a little harder to do for sale by owners now for some reason in the state of Virginia. But hey, I mean, that's kind of Zillow in general. But we got newest. We're going to avoid newest, guys. What I tell you is our rules for cold calling these leads. I'm going to do it while I'm talking to you guys. We want to talk to the older, older leads, okay? We, we want to do, talk to older, older ones that are over 100 days listed because they're simmering, sitting in there. They're not getting as much activity. Those are the areas we want. So let me call some older ones. I'm letting you guys know the older ones, you know, they're a lot harder for them to pick up, but once they pick up, they're usually way better real estate wholesaling deals. So I'm telling you guys, I just skip a lot of this stuff. So the, the one thing I'm telling you when I'm looking at this listing here is this house is in a growing historic area. Excellent for investment. Uh, selling for this. All right. No, hey, let's, let's give it a call. Let's see what happens, right? South Boston. It's Boston. Whoa. I've actually heard of that city before. I don't know why. Let's see how it goes. Please leave your message for. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. South Boston is on the border, kind of. All right. I owe it by Greensboro. All right. I mean, the things I'll let you know, these things have been listed for a year. There might be some good motivation, but you also just have to understand that these people are probably very, 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 very persistent people. And they probably have, they're a little crazy too. So you got to, you got to weed out the crazy with these older listings here. That, that's kind of the key here. Zach? I'm going to put this on mute. I mean, th these older leads are a little harder for them to answer, but let's see what happens here. Hello? 
Hello, hi. Is this the owner of 2009 Lincoln Avenue? Yeah, this is he. Hello, hi. This is Zach. I'm calling my business cell, so this might be a recorded line. Um, I I'm calling here on this listing. Is this property still for sale? Yeah, it's still for sale. It's going to need a lot of rehab or it's going to be a, a demo. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's kind of my first question here. I don't see many pictures on the property, so I'm just trying to see if this is going to be a good fit for us at all just to buy. I mean... Can you tell me a little bit about the property? Um, it was my, one of my aunts was living there. It was my, my old parents' property that, that we inherited. I, I live in South Carolina, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking to um, sell it because I'm not going to live up in Virginia. Okay. And so... I have other properties, I have other properties uh, that, I did, that I deal with. So. Okay. So you said you need a lot of work. What, what kind of work does this property need? Foundational, um, uh, probably a, a new roof at this time. Flooring, she, you know, she runs the whole the uh, whole deal there. But I mean, it's only a little over six hundred square feet. I'm sure something can be uh, done nice there. You know, um, where where it sits. Okay. And, and, and some of our profit could be made. I already know what the arb is in the area. I, I used to go there for some of the every summer growing up so okay i mean you, you said it it might be a total demolition or rebuild i mean so are you trying to sell it for just land value i'm guessing no I'm not, I'm not selling it for land value i already got it marked down you know just as is and um and, and, you know with the land and, and, and included okay and so yeah because the, the arm is all over six figures and in that area and there's still room even if you do a total rebuild there's still room unless someone's really greedy or whatever but um you know i've been doing this since 1996 so okay and so uh, i mean i just don't have pictures of the property that, that that's my one thing about this and yeah, it's kind of this, uh, if this is your cell i can, I can forward you the pictures and, and what, what's your name again I'm sorry. my name is zach what's your name okay zach yeah, I just have a couple more questions here. I mean, I I see this property has been, li been listed for, I mean, some time now at 20, basically 24,900. Is there like a specific reason why it hasn't sold yet? I mean, it seems like you've done the ARV very well. Okay, but I mean, is there a reason why it's not selling? Like, is there like a, a secret problem or something? I'm, I'm sure it's the re repairs. I'm sure, you know, I don't know where someone's going to um, go to somewhere where it's moving ready. You know, uh, you know, some people in the market that don't really understand real estate investing. I had, you know, some interest. And then um, when it came to, you know, earn earnest money deposits, you know, no one's, you know, no one's nowhere to be found. I, I know there's a lot of characters in the industry. Like I said, I've been doing this since uh, 1996, and $20,000 is not a lot of money. You know, and it, it, it shouldn't take uh, 45 to 60 days to, to close something out like that. I, I, I work multi-million dollar portfolios, uh, privately and commercially, or whatever, so. Wow. Okay. I mean, you, you seem like a straightforward businessman. You, you've, you've been around the block in real estate. I mean, I'll just keep it straight with you. I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I'm old school. Uh, probably, you know, the, the way you came up in real estate. If I'm going to buy this and I got to put a total rehab into this, and I know it's not that many square feet, I'd probably be closer to around 12,000 on this. Yeah, send me the pictures. Maybe something changes. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much for the call. I was going to offer him 15, but he kept saying Arv. 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 I...
what's arf art art like this is like a seal arf arf like a seal. like this is like a seal like i what is this like i i got like a baby seal like arf what, what? that makes me want to throw up okay I, I i gotta wash my palate down okay that was nasty arf i i got no pics on the house this thing's been sitting there for twenty five thousand. no looking i 12 land value I, I hate to say it but like this guy's unreasonable. He's got 25 years apparently in real estate and he's not smart enough to realize that this thing ain't moving. I, what, what, I, I want everyone to understand this. When, when you're talking to a, somebody and they need to stroke their ego with you to, to show you that they mean business, I don't, I don't care you've been in real estate for 90 years. If it, no one wants to buy it at that stupid high price, then it's way too high of a price. Duh. Jeez, hey. You been? I don't know what in 1996 what they called ARV, but that ain't it. Multi-million dollar portfolios. That, that, geez, Louise, man. If he's been so rich, he just renovate the property himself. My goodness. Okay, this guy is using a value history from Bank of America for a house loan, so I'm going to avoid this one. Lord, that that guy. 1875. New roof, new plumbing, bungalow. Okay. Near a local marina. All right, let's see where Hopewell is. Oh, Prince George's County. Oh. That's not Prince George's. Oh, it's surrounded by what? Whatever. I'll, I'll get into that later. All right. Let, let's just call this guy. Arf, 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 arf. Jeez. Don't want to ever hear that ever again. Arv, Arv, A R V. That's what it stands for. Okay, everyone, just to. So I mean, this property looks decent. We're gonna talk to the guy. We're, I mean, if they pick up, right? So I got it dialing in the background. Property's not terrible. I mean, cheap house, good dog. That's a nice dog right there. That's a good dog. Hope he's getting some water. Of windows. Hey, this is Zach. Give me a call back whenever you can. Thanks. Also on top of this too, um, he's got window units. So you just got to see there's no AC on this when you just look at properties like this. And the house looks decently clean. It said it had a 2016 roof on it. Just an older home though, right? I mean, not terrible. Like, And so for everyone, this is the for the washer dryer, just so you guys know. Or it might be for a hot water heater. I think it's for a washer dryer. I gotta look a little closer, but just got some plumbing there. I mean, not terrible. I mean, it obviously needs a full renovation, but not terrible there. Okay, let's go here. What's this one? Roanoke. Is this an apartment? No. Um. Tax access, below tax. Okay, so if the tax assessed, it says it's below tax assessed. That's still steep for me, but hey, we're going to check it out, right? Hello, hi. Is this the owner of 1016 2nd Street? Yeah. Hello, hi. This is Zach. I'm calling my business self. This might be a recorded call. Uh, I'm looking here, and I'm just seeing if you're still looking to sell the property. Yes, for sale. Okay. Tax assessed. Okay. Okay. Are you an investor? Uh, yes, I would be an investor okay. on this. You're, you're 
you're looking for a seal and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving you a below tax. It's a great piece of property. I'll sell it. I'm not worried about it. So, uh, you know, if you're looking to look really come for me to come down, I'm not going to do it. So I don't want to waste your time. It's good shape, great location, lots of parking. So I don't know. But it, I know if you're an investor, you're looking for a steal. Well, not and it's steel because it's a price for more than that already. Well, if the price is already a steal, I mean, I, I should be okay with it. I mean, I, there's different type of investors out here. You know, you got the crazy lowball people that are looking to buy it, sell it, and make a quick, you know, $20,000 yeah. profit. I'm, I'm not particularly looking on this type of property right here. Um, I, okay. I, I'll right. be looking more towards a cash flow on this. So I'm a little different with it, right? I'm not looking. You want to lease it and run it out. <laughs> what you're doing. I'm, I'm talking about, I can do that myself. Yes. Yeah. You want to, I still own the property and I don't know that I'm willing to do that. What? I've got some people that are To sell it to me? Buying. No, you sell it, but I don't know a lease to buy. No, 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 no. I'm not asking I'm, me to buy it and then I'll rent it out myself. Yeah, you do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah that also commercial plus multi-use you can have a duplex whatever you want yeah so th those were the questions i'm asking because i i gotta see for the price for what i can get in rent would it be worth it for me to buy or not that's kind of why i was calling you um definitely plus you can rent as offices one rent okay you to sign up it's uh it's already a price for more money okay so a, a lawyer had bought it it wasn't because of the house it was because of, of her because she was going to live in it and work out of it. It's so many benefits. And the location is prime location. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Carol Mickey. Nice to meet you, Carol. So this is Zach. So the first question I got to ask about the cash flow pro thing with this, you said it's multifamily. I see there's a separate unit. And you said it might possibly be a duplex. So is there... No, you can make a duplex. Ah, uh, okay. It's misused. But uh, it's not set up for... Uh, you, you could do it and put a kitchen upstairs. That would be up to you. Got but, it. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. People are doing it right around the corner. Okay, I was just seeing if uh, he's got lots of parking in the back. It's it's got a lot of it's it's um. Are you in Roanoke? Or are you out of? Do you live out of Roanoke? I, I live out of Roanoke. My partners are in Roanoke. Okay, they know this is prime location. And if they want to see it, but there's all possibility. Plus, you don't have to park on the street. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And um, it's the carriage house is finished. It's got three floors finished. Got plus it. Plus the carriage house. Okay. I see this little uh, green building over here. Is That's part of the property, right? Yes, it's finished. It's a carriage house. It has heat and air. It does not have plumbing. So if you wanted to, you'd have to put that in. Okay. And you could even rent that or whatever you want to do with it. Okay. But, you know, it's, people are looking. Matter of fact, I've got a person looking to buy it now. So if y'all are interested, let me know. Okay. Is that carriage house, is that zoned for commercial only? No, the whole property is mixed and used, out a commercial. So you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. And all right. So th this could possibly could be something me and my partner might want to buy. I mean, my question here is I, I know you, you don't want to sell it for a steal. I, I've seen it's been listed uh, for rent. I've had it sold. Let's not go through that again. Oh, it's okay. sold. No, it's been sold. But I don't want to go back. I know all about the house. I mean, it's, I know it's priced below tax assessed. It's a good deal. And what I don't, I don't, you know, if you're interested to buy it, that's what I'm interested. If you're not, you know, don't worry about it. I'm interested in buying it. Okay. Well, you got to tell me what the figures are and I'll tell you whether I'll sell it. Okay. Well, I, I mean, the one question I do have, so if I'm going to buy this, is there any like hidden renovations or issues I'm going to have to do about no, it? Like leaky roof? I've had a home inspection. And I can show it to you if you come out with a contract. I don't hide nothing. Okay. And if I was just going to buy this thing cash, 
I mean, I'll just pay closing costs, all that. That's kind of what we do. Is there just a price where I don't have to negotiate with you that just works, that we don't have to kind of play this cat and mouse game? Forty nine, I do two forty six, and I'm not paying for nothing. Okay. And that's a steal. Okay. Take it or leave it. Okay. I mean, would you consider one hundred eighty thousand? Absolutely not. And don't waste my time. Really, don't waste it. I've told you what the most I'll do. I'm not worried about it. Okay. But, you know, that's an insult. Don't even bother wasting my time. You're trying to lowball me, and I don't need to do it. I can let that house sit forever. And okay. I, I know the. I know what I can do with it. You're losing a good deal, a good piece of property, but I don't. I'm not worried about it. So, end the conversation. Okay. Well, if that person is going to buy the property uh, that you said, um, good luck with that. Uh, if not, I'll call back in a couple of weeks and see what happened. No, you don't waste your time. I won't sell it for that. Okay. Don't waste it. Okay, okay. Well, I have one question. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to come back to my partner here. How did you come up with that price? Just so I can bring it back to my partner. It's appraised already for a lot more. This okay. Year. Got it. Who okay. appraised it? A lot more. And it's going, it's a commercial, but you're not even in the ballpark and there's, you're wasting my time. And I don't want to talk to somebody that I've told you, that's the lowest I'm going to go. Don't, you don't want to pay it. I just, you're crazy, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to deal with it. The answer is absolutely no. You don't come close to that. We ain't got nothing to talk about. Okay. No worries. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and uh, good luck selling the property. Same ballpark. She's playing soccer. I'm playing baseball. Like I, We're not even the same stadium. That's ridiculous. All right. So just let, let, let's break this all down. Okay. Let, let's break this all down. She's when, when I say, and I get these things where everyone's out here saying, Oh, it's worth this. It's worth that. Ah, let me tell you the facts. Okay, let's tell you the facts, all right? This thing's been listed, all right? We're, we're looking here, okay? This thing has been listed for a decent amount of time, like since basically February, okay? It's almost been three months this thing has not moved once. This lady hasn't gotten any offers, any looks, any contracts, none of that stuff. None of it. Not one. Not one. So... I'm crazy. I just letting you, I want everyone to understand where I'm coming from here. At 250, this thing's ridiculous. On top of that, too, she was renting it for 1300 a month. And maybe it's 17, 1800 a month. Cash flow comps easily at most a single rent out for 1800. And so when I look at 1800 a month, I divide that by 1% and I'm at 180. Like that's that's kind of my offer, right? Like I look at what will cash flow and what will do. She's in cuckoo la la land because the tax assessor assessed it for too high. Of course, they're going to assess it for too high. You know why? Because they want their money. Money. That's all they care about. Hey, it's the government for you, right? Right. I'm crazy. You know, I, I'm not here to make anyone have a bad day. So I'm not going to say anything mean to her or, or like, because I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm the sweetest person in the world, right? But, you know, I, it's insane. Like, what, what do I look like to you? Do I look like a crazy guy? Like, come on. Don't wait. Yeah, it's worth my time just giving the offer out here. I, I think it kind of be funny, but hey, I, I, I'm not going to not give an offer. I'm already, I was already deep into the negotiations, right? Like, why not? But guys, no cash buyer is going to want to buy this thing for under probably, I mean, 200 is the most I could ever see a buy, right? It, it's kind of funny, but it's like, you know, a, a steal, a steal, like, 258 is it's been sitting here's the you, you all know she's crazy she took a month okay and took out 500 bucks off of it all right she took 500 bucks off of it think about that that's that's how nuts she'll wait another month take 500 off of that this is la la land cuckoo guys i just want you guys to understand this is not the real estate market to be going like Middle finger, screw you. I'm giving my high price. This ain't the market for it. 
So this is why I want everyone watching this. Do not budge on your offer price. Do not budge when it comes to going out here and giving offers to motivated sellers. Do not budge on it. You need to go keep the low balls because you do enough of them, you're going to get great deals. It's just so funny. It's hilarious. But hey, I was probably her first legit offer, honestly. Crazy. All right. Okay. I mean, need some updating here. Not terrible, though. Let's look at this here. Um, Lexington. Um, I mean, it's kind of about Lynchburg. We can make it work. I-64, let's just read the description. New flooring, countertop, huge deck. Home inspection's been uh, preformed. So I'll give everybody, when I'm looking at this property right here, when I see this, this is something of concern. I want you guys to notice this here. It says, all right, home will be sold as is. The reasoning is being... I hear that keyword when I hear that is because straight up, I want you guys to understand this straight up when it comes to these type of deals, there's some problem with this property. So before I even call this person, I want you guys to understand this is stuff I've noticed very easily, but this property has some issue with it. It's not being sold quote as is for nothing. Like it's not being quote sold as is just for it to, lollygag out here and, and do nothing, right? Like there, there's a reason why it's being sold as is. There's definitely a problem on the property. They're not saying it. They say as is, a, sold as is. And so I know there's something going on, right? Uh, new flooring, blah, 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 blah. Listed for a little bit. Let's look at this here. 215, it took three off of it. Eh. I mean, we'll call it up, see what happens, right? But Jeez, Louise here. Okay, so we got I mean, let's see what we get on this one. So I got a good question here, you know. Uh, do you... Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thanks. So I'm going to ask here, do you use Zestimates? So I, I'll let you guys know, I don't really use Zestimates, really. I, I think, guys, the, the A in the word Zillow is for accuracy. All right, that, that, that's that's kind of the running joke, but it's true. Zestimates don't mean much. All right, so like I can do comps. The Zestimate here is 136. Now, 136 could be completely right. It could be completely wrong. Zillow is really off a lot for a lot of things. And so I'd really have to do some comps here and, and really look at it. Now, my guess here, the Zestman's probably not maybe off. The tax assessed has stayed the same. So I think their tax assessed is off. So that's kind of screwing them up a little here. Really for a property like this, I'm going to have to look at the what the cash flow comps are, right? And so I see a 189. This is a thousand square feet. I see a 250. And so the square foot can be off. New ones are selling for 1300 like that in Lexington. And so if I kind of go off like a zoom map here, you see a property like this sold for 76 and this was a 1200. And so looking at this, why is this estimate 238 sold for 76? So it's like, you know, like I'm looking at comps here. I got 37 grand on here. 
oops, where did I click there? Like just using Zillow as a comp tool. I um, mean, got 135, it's about 1,000 square feet. So that that's honestly a good comp. And that's kind of showing like, oh, right. And I see a 231, see what a high comp shows. High comp, that's a lot of square footage and that's a nice property, right? It was probably built probably the 70s. I don't know. Let's check it out. 63, I mean, decade. And then, but I, I see a 250 here. And that makes no sense at all, right? Like, so these comps are all over the board. And so honestly, I'm going to look at this 106 here. No thousand square footer. So the, looking at this property here, I'm just going to have to talk to the guy and see what's happening with it. The comps are going to be the best, but really for when I'm talking to sellers quick, I'm just letting you guys know the one thing. I don't even look at the Zestimate. I, I, I want people to understand. I, I don't look at the Zestimate on this. I look at the most important part when talking to a seller. I don't care about the Zestimate or the assessed value. I don't care about the listing price. I mean, I'll use it for leverage. But I, I care about one thing, and that's the motivation. What is the seller's motivation for selling the property? That is the true thing I need to know. That's the true thing that is fascinating towards to me. And that's the thing that I actually need to know. If I don't know what their true motivation to selling the property is, this is a waste of time for you and me. I, I want you to understand this. This is a complete waste of my time. If they're not motivated, I don't care if the thing's assessed for a million dollars. But if they're not motivated, they're, they're not going to want to sell for a discount. That's the key here. That's the secret sauce when it comes to my cold calling and, and talking to motivated sellers and all this. It, it's do they have a motivation? Are they motivated to sell the property? That's what we care about. So yeah, the assessment, I guess it's okay, right? It doesn't hurt to have that there. But no, I, I don't use estimates. I, I care. I, I just want to, this is why the thing, everyone gets so confused to what I do. I don't go out here and you know, look at the assessment, run a comp. Cause it would take me 15, 20 minutes to pull a comp on every deal. What I do is I just get, I, I don't care about really about the property too much. I care about the person. And so what I do is I, I just throw the phone on. I have a quick combo and just, I literally say this one line. And th this is the one line that not really, I mean, there's some motivated people on today, but not, not the craziest. I literally asked them this. It's like, why hasn't this property sold yet? I mean, is there a reason why are you even looking to sell this house? Like you just got to ask them why they're looking to sell it. And if their motivation isn't there, there's no point of talking to them. Like there's zero. The, the point is when someone has a motivation, they want to sell for discounts. That's why I get these uh, huge discounts on these deals is because they have a motivation for it. And you know, that, that, that's kind of the point here. So let's get back to Colin. Let's go back to talking to some sellers. Let's start getting some wholesaling deals. All right here. Is this Blacksburg? Oh, Blacksburg is actually not a, and I, I think this is ugly. The little stone and the the wood. I think the wood walls throw me off. Some about wood walls I, I do not like. This by uh Blacksburg's Virginia Tech, right? Eh, who knows? Uh let me look at Blacksburg really quick. Cause if I talked to, all right. Cool. All right, let's get on the phone with these people. Okay. Oh, okay. This is a mobile manufactured home. All right. Cool. That's the wrong phone number. Right. I mean, this is a good looking mobile manufactured house though. It's by a college, it says seven minutes from Virginia Tech. So it can't be a terrible property. Your call has been ah! Answer me. Let me close. Is not available. At the tone, please 
record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To send a fax, press 4 now. To leave a call back, press fax? Hello, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. Let me give you a quick fact. Nobody uses facts anymore. That's so stupid. Holy moly, what is this? All right, it's got an 1,800 square foot garage. So just so you guys know, with properties like this, I mean, it's like... That's great. You have an 1800 square foot garage. D does that mean anything to me? Not really. And so this is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And you got Woodlawn, Virginia. Oh, you're on the border. I mean, <sighs> okay. Yeah. The problem here is I can't confirm the square footage of the property because they got. Lord, look at this thing. I mean, you need cash flow on this thing. The garage won't cash flow as much in like a rural part, right? It sold for, here's the problem guys. And so, you know, Zestments don't matter, but like what it actually sold for is important to me. The thing here sold two years ago, basically, a year and a half ago for 55 grand. And now he wants to flip it for three X the value. It's not there, right? I mean, maybe 70. So this guy's in crazy la-la land. I mean, we'll call him up, but this will be a quick call. I mean, if he bought it for this, it's property values haven't gone up that much, especially in that area. You gotta be kidding me here. Crazy people today. Stupid. Stupid! I hope you guys understand where I'm coming. It sold for 55 a year and a half ago. Please call back or send me a text. Sorry, I won't At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, simply hang up or press pound for further options. Hey, this is Zach. Give me a call back whenever you can. Thanks. All right. See here. Let's go to the next one. I, that, that, it's ridiculous. Okay. So yeah, I don't like assessments, but sold comps, those actually matter. Okay. Those are the real facts. Estimates kind of like opinions. Z yeah, it's true. I mean, assessments are opinions and comps are facts. Wait, what? House is approximately 700 square feet with the garage and pool. House is... Okay. You can't... Whoa. What are we looking at here? Okay. House looks good. Oh my gosh. Like we're going back to the garage thing again. It's like, I mean, I can't value that as a house. I mean, no one's going to cash flow an indoor pool like this. Like this is so stupid. I was looking at, I was looking at a multifamily deal kind of like not in this area, but like way more like uh, South of this kind of like North Carolina area, like this big multifamily indoor pool. I think it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It's like, come on. I just take a bath at that point. So ugly in here. Green bathrooms are not terrible. I mean, beautiful outdoors. Good heating. I mean, uh, I mean, let's talk to this guy. But like, holy moly! I, th I mean, I guys, I'm not comping the the. St I mean, three acres. I'll give it to you, right? I'm not going to give you guys the 1,700 extra square feet in the garage base because that just doesn't make me money. I, guys, I, I care about the cash flow. And if it ain't going to cash flow, I don't care. All right, let's look at this. Jeez, what is wrong with these people? Hello, hi. Is this the owner of 341 Bennington Lane? Yes. Hello, hi. This is Zach. I'm calling my business cell, so this might be a recorded call. Um, I I'm looking at the 
property here. Are, are you still looking to sell it? Well, yes. Okay. Uh, what's your name? What's that? Uh, what's your name? Jerry Vass. Jerry? Well, nice to meet you. My name's Zach. So uh, I'm looking at the property here. I might possibly be looking to buy it, but I just have some questions if that's all right. Sure. Yeah, so I, I mean, I read the description. It looks great. Uh, looks nice here. I, I see the indoor swimming pool. I see the property here. Uh, just so I understand the square footage correctly, is the house 1,700 square feet? I mean, what, this, the actual property, what's the under air square footage of that? The house is 1,700 square feet. Okay. And then that garage and pool area would make it 3,300. No, the garage by itself is 3,300. Oh, okay. Got it. Huh. The house actually is probably a little more than 1,700. Uh, when I measured the stuff, it's uh, I didn't count the hallways or the closets. I didn't realize that when they did square footage, they did the outside dimensions. Okay. So it's probably, if somebody was going to get a loan on it, they would probably have to measure it themselves because probably it's, I mean, I don't know how much more, but I didn't count hallways and call. I just counted rooms and measured the rooms. Okay. Huh. All right. I mean, I, that makes sense. So, I, I mean, I'm looking at the pictures here. I mean, it lo looks good here. I mean, what my only question here is I'm just kind of curious on this. This property's been listed for a little bit here. I mean, is there a reason why the property hasn't been sold yet? Not that I know of. It. It's been under contract twice. Oh, okay. Is there a reason why it didn't go through? Well, one man had cancer come back, and I knew his brother my whole life, oh, and I geez. wouldn't hold him to the contract. And he said if he gets better this summer, he'll be back. Okay. And the other one, a man and his fiance, she quit her job when they was pre-approved and uh, of course you went and got another job. You know how that goes. Yeah. And, uh, well, they, people in the CNA business, they, they do that, especially the home health. Yeah. To get a raise. That's how they do. They pretty much got to quit and get another job up here. And then, and then uh, every time they quit, they get a raise. Yeah. Well, needless to say, they was pre-approved and they didn't know with her quitting like that, that it would kick the loan out because she got another job the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, actually paying better than the ones you had the day before, but the up here that kicks the loan out for six months. Jeez. Yeah, they was pretty upset. Okay. And I've got and I've got two more people looking at your property right now. So. Okay. And just just so I understand this, just so I understand the values and everything here, because I mean the estimate looks really low on this, uh, and then you have it listed for a lot higher. I'm just trying to understand where everything's coming from. Did this property get appraised? when it was getting a loan when he had it under contract? Uh, no. no. I, I had two I had two realtors come and appraise it for me. Okay. But what you're seeing there is stuff through the county. The, the Zillow hmm. stuff. Yeah. They all they all go off the county stuff. And our county up here where we live is, is all screwed up always. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually the, the actually the garage is not even on that. Wow. Is Which it on is the deed? Two acres. Sure it is. Okay. I've got I've got surveys and the deed and everything. Huh. But our county up here, they they always screwed up. It's it's always been a screw up since I I've lived here my whole life. I'm sixty years old. Yeah. And it's always been like that, but that's that's Allegheny County for you. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but no, actually I had two realtors come and told me I was crazy to ask two seven five for. But, uh, I, I, you know, my mother and father left it to me. They passed away. And, and I've got my own house right down the road. And I've got a 2550 with 12 acres. Oh, wow. And and all three of my kids have houses. And they all don't need it. And, <laughs> but it, it's, it'll sell. It's, it's no problem. I got, I got more people coming to look at it every day. Of course, the government's got the interest rate all screwed up. Yeah. From what it used to be for people. They don't realize that back when I built my house in 93 that, that the interest rate was seven and a half. Yeah. You know, and they went through about a 10 or 12 year period there when they could get money for a little bit of nothing. But, yeah. But, 
you know, the bank screwed that up too because they took and took the money that they were supposed to be lending people, and they they bought the stock with it and everything else. But okay, but anyhow, well, I just want to make sure that we're in the same ballpark here. I mean, when, yeah, when actually, you... actually, the people that actually comes and looks at the house, I've had only one person from Zillow that uh, panned out, and the only reason is because they're coming here to work in the school system from Iowa. Oh, wow. And uh, she's coming in July, and she's still interested in the house, but she has to sell her house in Iowa. And mm. she said when she sells it, she won't need a loan, but... She was not willing to enter into a contract. She just come Easter weekend, and she flew back home. And uh, she's going to drive back out sometime after school's out in the May. And she still wants it, but, but she didn't want to enter into a contract until she sold her house. And yeah. I can understand that. So Makes well, sense. more people coming to look at it. So Okay. But, you know, it's, it's, well, you, it's around here where we live, winter's a bad time to sell a house. Yeah, <laughs> we actually put it on Zillow right there around Thanksgiving, but it took us six months to get it through the house, mom and dad stuff. Mm. But uh, but it is what it is. Okay, and so when you had the property under contract with the CNA, what price were they looking to buy under contract for? I don't want to waste your time or my time. I just want to see if we're in a decent price range. The same price. Oh, wow. Price one, one, one minute. Nobody, the people that's, that's actually put it on the contract has not dickered the price one bit. Wow. I I would probably just, I mean, I'd probably, between you and me, I probably wouldn't be able to even offer anything close to that. I'd probably just go well, with them then. Then you're wasting your time and mine too. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, All right, I mean. Uh, I've been offered 250 for it, and I'm not going to take it. Uh, that realtors actually wanted me to put 329 on it, and I wouldn't do it because I wanted a quick sale and I don't want to gouge people. Yeah. And of course, I got 100 people that wants to rent, I own it. Another 100 people that just wants to rent it, and I'm not going to do that either. Yeah. I mean, would you take payments on the property? What's that? Would you take payments on the property? No. No? Okay. No. No, like I say, it's in a nice place, area in the county. It's by itself. It's across the road. It's quiet. It's been well maintained. It's got the heat pump and the oil furnace that's less than five years old. It's got a ten thousand dollar outdoor wood stove to heat the swimming pool, heat the garage. Uh, it's got you know, it's, we're talking a garage here. We're talking stick built, three quarter inch plywood shingles, six inches of concrete. We're not talking about cheap junk that hadn't been taken care of all right sounds good so if anything changes please let me know but uh this thing probably no, should sell very fast changes. there's not gonna be any changes uh it is what it is like say i live a mile from there and and it'll sell sooner or later might be after the government quits messing with the interest rates but yeah this should I'll be any time people. actually actually okay. i got even more people coming this weekend to look at okay but, well, best of luck. But no, I'm thank you. You too. All right. Appreciate it. Have a great one. I so he's blaming the government from ruining my high prices on real estate. It's not the government. It's your stupid high price. That thing ain't yet. so I'm just letting you know when when uh Samuel's got the he's capping. And that that's a straight cap, okay? I'll tell you, ain't dang nobody offering 250 all cash for that thing. Now, if they do, sure, prove me wrong. I've been proven wrong plenty of times, but I've been proven right way more times than that. This property, I mean, th this thing's way, way too high. Um, w w sellers lie. Uh, th this guy is lying so hard out of his teeth. I mean, this thing's been listed for 160 days. Like, he's talking like he's in he's in northern Maine over here. They're like The winter freezes over and no one can go see the house. Like It don't work like that, okay? See the heating systems on this thing. That's so stupid. All right. Like, come on. Come on. Like, what, what's that? And I want you guys to understand that the, the, the type of lying I see from this guy. He didn't get an appraisal when he had it under contract because it was going to get a loan and everything. And so that was, I mean, it theoretically could happen, but that's kind of a little red flag I'm looking, like, I'm looking at. When you start blaming the interest rates and not your own 
property values. I, I see issues with that. That guy's just in La La Land. But hey, uh, the, the one thing I'll let you guys know is he was talking very slow. And so we have to understand when you're talking to sellers like that is you need to talk very slow with them too. He's got a little Southern draw, but he's playing, oh, you know, the one guy got sick. Hey, it's out of his control. But the one person with the CNA thing, eh, I don't know about that, right? Like they go off of W2s. It could happen, but I, I, I smell some cap on this one, okay? I should get a hat. I should get a blue hat. I call my cap hat. When, when, I, when, I, when I'm doing my live calls and the seller's capping to me, I'm just going to put a hat on. Straight cap. Or no, I put he capping. Or they capping. I'll just put it on. So you guys know that I know that they're capping. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, what are you going to do there? <laughs> yeah. Capping. All right. Norfolk. Love Norfolk. Okay, this thing's a vertical building. All right. Ooh, we got a $40,000 price increase. Nice. Nice. So, one ninety five listed okay this is another crazy i'm i'm skipping this one hey, that, that's crazy all right 220 no central air for sale by owner okay let's call this one up See if you can answer on this one. It's her caps a lot. <laughs> Man, I really wish I could just. I wish I could just troll these people. Like I want to, but it's just such a, it, it, I'm, I, it's too mean. I, I can't do that. And I got to give him some respect if I do a follow up, but like, please leave your message for eight I just want to tell that seller, like, Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. I just want to tell these sellers, like, is it, do I look like an idiot to you? Like, do, do I look stupid? Like, why, why would I buy it for that high of a price? Like, do you understand you're upset at me lowballing. I should be ups upset with you highballing, right? Like there has to be some recipro reciprocity here with between me and these uh, sellers. It's like, come on, you can't be highballing me and be upset that I'm that I'm lowballing you. I have to lowball because you're so high. We got to meet in the middle. They're playing my own games. Oh, I hate to see that. Stupid Halifax Street, right? So this one be. Another price increase. The gall on these people today. Okay, maybe they put some money into it. Huh. Okay. Quiet family. Hmm. It's like a port's mouth. Why do they all? Why do they all have private storage areas? This is getting stupid. This isn't that Norfolk region, right? I mean, it's a hot area, so I'll call it. It's a hot area. Why not? Okay, listed for 123 days. Hello? Yes, I speak Hello, hi, this is Zach. Is this the owner of 1002 Robinson Road? Yeah, Zach, who are you? 
with a real, real estate firm or? No, I'm just myself okay. looking to buy it for cash. Okay. Are uh, you an investment corporation? You know, let me know something. Is that? I mean, I, yeah, it's a corporation. It's me and my partner's name on it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Cause you, I, I'm a real estate investor. Cause I kind of just like to be straight. You know, are we doing wholesaling here? What we got going? Zach? I mean, I'll probably just buy it with my partner for cash. Uh, okay. I mean, let me be straight up with you. Are you the owner of the property? Yeah, yeah, I'm the owner. I just, don't, you know, I'm a straight shooter. So I just kind of like to take me time, you know, if you're a wholesaler. And, uh, you know, that whole sales equation that we use a lot because I would sell as well, it's not going to work on this property. You know what I mean? Just to be straight. You know. So do you flip this property. house if you're an investor? Uh, say that again, Zach. Go ahead. Did you flip this property if you're an investor? I have the property. I have a tenant in the property now. Okay, so it's a it's a rental for you. So I have right, right. It, yeah, this is not a. a it can be a fixer up naturally because you can. It's not twenty twenty three. You know, bells and whistles on the property, but it's it's being rented as we speak as is. So. Okay. Do you know how much it's being rented out for? Say that again. Do you know how much it's getting per month in rent? Okay, so you have a lease for fifteen hundred on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the yeah. lease is fifteen hundred on the property, with the tenant currently. Right. It is yes or no. Correct. Correct. Okay. Cool. So it's getting fifteen hundred uh, a month. How long is that lease for? Month to month. Okay, got it. All right. And so I, I see there was a price increase here. Is there is there something that happened to the property in the past month? Did you run your comps on it, Zach? I did not run the comps on it. That's why I'm. I was calling to ask. What? Right. It, it, it'd be best for you to do your own due diligence. I don't have too much time, man. I'm a busy, busy guy. Uh, to be kind of, you know, you got to do your due diligence on the property. Well, that's why I'm asking you questions. That's why I'm doing the due diligence. Well, I'm saying, call, I'm saying, use your resources. You can't expect to always contact another investor, and we just give you the whole recipe. You got to earn a little bit. You know, you're just pushing paperwork. You got to put in a little work, Zach. We, I know what you're doing. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to. Humbly, you know, as, as, as I can, and I'll be out there. Let me take care okay. of you. Uh, I'm trying to work with you, Zach. I know you're fresh out there. You're trying to make a way. I get it, but do a little work, man. Earn your strength. Who told you I was fresh out of here, bro? Hey, close the door real quick. Let me take care of Hey, Zach. Hey. Hey, you got to lower your tone, man. Lower I'm going to hire my tone. I'm going to hire my tone. <laughs> I'm going higher, bro. Bro, stop capping. These little boys, the freaking ego on these men. Ah, ah. Lee, jeez, Louise, jeez, holy moly, holy moly. Oh my gosh, these boys, these boys out here. I gotta do one thing real quick. First of all, he was lying to me because. He said market rents for 1500 He didn't tell me the rent on the property was. So all I got to do is one quick search here. It's going to be the easiest thing to do. All right. All right. Portsmouth County. Jeez, that guy was being a little weird. All right. So let me look at one thing really quick. I think this guy was wholesaling it. So let me just look here. All right. All right, B-Man. All right. Yeah, that was kind of funny. But guys, when someone gives you attitude on it, he's not a motivated seller. Um, that's kind of funny. But those are never the owners on the prop. Actually, he might be the owner here. Let's look at him. Let's look at the thing. Oh, that's him. He owned it. Let's see here. 
Um, no, yeah. Oh my gosh, I got the guy. That's kind of funny. But um, yeah, I, I just, you got to be careful. Guys, when, when someone throws their ego into it, close the door, let me handle this. I, you know, it just, guys, I want everyone to understand when you throw your ego into a conversation that, oh, I'm better than you. You're a new wholesaler. I, I've been buying it for a while. It's never going to work well. All right. If somebody wants to tell me I have an attitude, that's not a professional. We're professionals in this business, guys. And so I want you to understand when someone just gives you that, that toot on it, you got to understand. So I want people to understand what I, where I'm coming from here. Me calling the person is doing, is doing due diligence. He raised it by $13,000 in the past month. And I'm trying to understand, did he do something to the property to make it raise it on there? The issue you're going to see here, and this is a very, very important thing. I think most wholesalers need to understand here is when you're looking at this, when you have a tenant in the property, you're not doing crazy renovations to the property. So I'm trying to understand why it went up $13,000, but Hey, no, no big deal here. Let's see here. Jeez, yeah. So you just got to be careful of those type of people. It looks like, yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. Just be careful of those type of people out here. <laughs> All right, next call. Uh... Private financing available. Basketball court. All right. Solana. That's a new one. 13 grand. Whoa. This house will not be sold through the internet. I also make 10 K cash. Jeez Louise. Where's Rich? The problem with this is it's in Richlands. I mean, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. That's the problem. Let's see here. It's on the West Virginia border. I mean, ugh. Raven Duran. Worth a call with this guy, right? I mean, 13 grand. Jeez. Lordy, Lordy. All right. now you can leave a message after the tone when you have finished press the pound key or just hang up hello this is zach please give me a call back whenever you can thank you all righty
Where's this guy? Yeah, I saw it. So the guy also, that one dude that was talking, he has a hundred, he has $15 million in real estate linked to him. So most likely it's a corporation that's not owned, but he might own it though. I don't know many guys with, I mean, actually, people that own a lot of real estate have big egos, but I doubt it. But hey, we'll see. But most likely those are other wholesalers. So what are you going to do? All right. Text only. Do not call. No wholesalers. Price is firm. Okay, this guy seems ridiculous, but we'll call him. Why not? It's been 100 days. See what happens. He might not have a number, though. Whoa. All right, we'll go to the next one here. Wait, that looks nice. Three acres. A little too nice for my liking, though. Okay. Eleven hundred dollar HOA. No. Okay, five dollar HOA. Okay, if they're offering owner financing, that thing's probably way too high of a price. Jeez. Okay, I see a price cut. This looks good. All right. What language is that? Is that Korean? Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. I'll tell you this. No, oh, yeah, I played the. If anybody tells me to do something, I will do the opposite just to spite somebody. It's kind of funny, but yeah, there's a lot of fizzbos in La La Land, but you, you do get some really decent ones. You just got to keep calling them. Okay, so this one was. Got no pictures here. Okay, that was plans. We look from uglier houses here. Okay, we got a little price cut here. Look at some little sneaker houses here. Okay. See, I got another as is sale right here. 
Includes realtor's commission. Jeez. All right. Let's give him a call here. You've reached the cell phone, leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hello, this is Zach. Please give me a call back. Thank you. All right, let's see. So Kevin asked me, can you make a pre-foreclosure cold calling video? I can make a pre-foreclosure cold calling video. You ain't going to like it. Pre-foreclosures are one of the worst sellers to call because they get so many calls from loan sharks, loan servicing companies, and all these other type of companies. Like they just keep getting called and called and called and called and called that their their contact rate, the, the contacts you get when you call like hundred of them can be a lot lower with like a code violation or probate list. Now I get some calls uh, and live calls where I pulled the probate lists and the code violation lists. I can do that too if you guys want uh, next week or the week after where I can just pull government lists and call them. Uh, you don't really get in front of too many sellers when you do that, even in a couple hours, because I'm usually got the headphones in, boop, 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 doing it. But I mean, I can do that too. Let's see here. And so drum play asks, why didn't you offer terms? Some deals just don't work good on terms. So you got to understand terms sound great for everything, but if the property needs too much renovations and work, Terms, I, I don't like that. So there are some people that love doing terms when you got to drop 50 or 60 grand on it. My favorite part of terms is dropping five, 10, 15 grand at most, and then getting our arbitrage off of that. That's how you truly make money in the best ROI in the business. It, yeah, dropping 70, 80 K and doing terms, I, I'd rather just own the property at that point, right? There's too much risk involved with it, especially when you look at just buying your own rental property. Uh, that's why lease options and subject twos are great when, the upfront cost is under 10, 15 grand guys. You see me all do, do all my deals it, I'm telling you, you have to go out here and do terms on properties that actually work. They work really well. Gabrielle says, where can I find a reliable real estate coach in my area? Is there a website or certain way to find a mentor? Gabriel, local mentors are probably one of the worst mentors to ever have this. It's insane. So this is just like you playing a uh, sports team. Okay or you're on a sports team, right? And you ask the point guard on your team, can you coach me to become a really good point guard? That point guard wants to become the star. He wants to stay as a star. He wants to go D1 or whatever, right? He's not going to coach you. I mean, some do, but very rarely to actually get better than them. That They want you just below their level. That's why you need somebody like me. You know, I just tell you, I'm not in your market. Oh, I'm probably in your market virtually, but like, I don't need to make money. Uh, like I don't, my income's not relying on me making more money than you. So just be very careful with that. Freeholsting.com is the best mentorship out there. You talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll answer your questions. That is the point. Let's see here. Any other questions? Do you have to skip trades? You don't have to skip trades government list. You can just do reverse rank for dollars. Remember at freeholsting.com, we show you. All right. And so... Uh, do you do keyword search? No keyword search at all. Maybe on uh, on MLS on market properties, but that's probably not the thing. So guys, uh, Steven says, what's up, Zach? Do you usually do go for mobile homes when cold calling FISBO? Do you calculate ARV the same way you do regular properties? So mobile homes are very similar to FISBOs because the prices are all a little weird. I go off a of cash flow, cash flow. All right. If it doesn't make dollars and cents, it doesn't make sense. Right. And so the property needs, I want everyone to understand this. If the property can't rent out for a certain amount of money, you can't buy it for that price. And so if, if the property doesn't make money, like, so the only ones that you can work with like vacant land, it's not producing any income right now, but you can buy, you can sell the dream to somebody that will renovate it and do it. Sure. But I'll tell you for a mobile home, you want to make sure the land is owned underneath it and you want to make sure you get some cash flow, right? I buy a bunch of mobile homes. 
but they're getting a thousand twelve hundred dollars a month in rent and they're actually like you know 70 80k and it's worth it for me to do it the cash flow is insane it's great and it appreciates because it's in florida mobile homes you ask your cash buyers what type of mobile homes they're looking to buy and then go after those properties mobile homes are very specific to cash buyers there's some cash buyers that don't like them because you can't really get the right insurance and stuff with it. It just depends everywhere. So just be careful. But government lists are still going to be the best ones. So guys, if you want to learn how to get into wholesaling real estate, absolutely for free, spend no money to learn it, get mentored for me for free. Just go to freewholesaling.com. Uh, Thursday, we're going to do one-on-one calls. So it's always very exciting. And uh, see you guys soon. This is Zach Kinn signing out. Stay nice, do the right thing, and make sure you guys go to freewholesaling.com and hit that like button and subscribe. So appreciate it. This is Zach Kinn signing out.